Bayer Neurological Institute is expanding its footprint in global care, education, and research by partnering in an exchange program with a university in South Africa. To tell us more, we welcome Dr. Huya Mabarak, Global Neurology Program Manager at Barrow. It's good to have you here. Welcome Thank you to Arizona. Thank you for having Horizon. me. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so it's a partnership with the university. It sounds like it's an exchange program of some kind. Yes. So it's a bi-directional um, educational program that we are supporting our clinical residents here that we have at Barrow and also the University of Westwatersand residents in basically coming and learning from us, but our residents also get an opportunity to go there and learn from their faculty. And we should mention the focus is on things like stroke and epilepsy, these sorts of things? Yeah, so stroke and epilepsy are part of it, and it's something that we have identified as a need there, just like it is here in Phoenix, Arizona. And I think that's one of the great things about the program is that our residents realize that the need for specialized neurologic care is worldwide, and now we have an opportunity Opportunity to help enhance that. So you have residents there coming here, learning what they learn and taking it back and being able to treat folks there. And residents here go there for in the field treatment and come back with that experience, right? Absolutely. And so our residents um, going over travel with me and some of the other faculty are getting involved as well. And this is built on a 15 year long relationship that Dr. Asset has built with Witswater Sand University. And so these relationships have formed and now our residents get to go there and immerse themselves in these amazing clinical and, and research opportunities that we have. How did that relationship get started? What was that all about? So he has 15 years of research that he's worked at the School of Public Health and actually has done um, some clinical teaching as well. So he's very established there as far as the research is concerned, um, especially in relation to manganese toxicity. Manganese toxicity, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, how open are the folks in South Africa to getting folks from America coming over with their ideas? I mean, you were down there, yeah. what did you experience? I mean, they're absolutely delighted and I think that's one of the most humbling things is being welcomed by this community and this population with open arms and that's partially due to the amazing relationship that was set before we actually came on. But now they welcome our residents, they're there and willing to learn but also to share their knowledge because we're not going there and taking over a program. They're teaching us just as much as we're learning from them. What are they teaching? If I'm a resident, I'm going down there, yeah. I'm part of the program, and I'm, you just set me free. <laughs> what am I doing down there? I think one of the most exciting things is seeing how important the neurological exam is at the bedside. One thing that we get here is loads of information from the electronic medical system. There's lots of imaging that's ordered before we even get to see the patient. And there, it's really about the history. It's about putting hands on the patient and actually gaining that knowledge about what's going on from the patient that's right in front of you and talking about it as a group and taking the time to learn at the bedside. And so here we don't have as much time to take out the noise and all of the background information that we initially get, but there you get to, to develop that skill and really take it home. And take it home, and are you seeing the results of that skill being developed? Absolutely. I mean, our residents get an amazing clinical experience here, but I think it's important that we make sure that they're globally aware and that they're aware of different cultures and different backgrounds and how to approach patients in resource-limited settings. I was gonna say, as far as culture is concerned, are there things you need to be aware of? I mean, you don't say or look or touch. There are <laughs> customs all over the world that we got to be aware of here. Yeah, and, and our partners have been so great in sharing that with us and making sure that we're respecting the patient's um, space and, and the cultures and the backgrounds that they come from. The interesting there is that there's 12 official languages. So oh my just that alone is an amazing thing to see them navigate the language barrier and work there with without the iPad translator that you can can call. <laughs> oh, but how do they, again, I'm going down there, I'm a resident, I don't speak any of those 12 languages, yeah. how do you get by? So with the assistance of our colleagues, I and see. that's why we're really learning from them and they help us navigate those, those systems. And some of their residents there speak four to five languages. And so it's just really wow. impressive. Um, Obviously, this program is a success and, and long time in the making. Are there other things that Barrow is doing as far as extending that global outreach? Absolutely. So our neurosurgery program is also doing a lot of work in Tanzania. And not just the neurology and neurosurgery department is involved. We have 
observers coming to our neuro rehab program. I think they just had their first observer. We just had our first resident from South Africa, and there's constant people coming in internationally to gain clinical knowledge from Barrow. And, and last question, I, 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 the cultural aspects fascinates me because here in America, you know, you have a neuro disease or a condition, mm -hmm. it's frightening, it's confusing, you don't quite understand it. And I would imagine there, it's the same thing. How do you calm those nerves? How do you, how, bedside manner in yeah. all more ways than one. Yeah, I think bedside manner is crucial in really getting back to the humanistic side of medicine where you take the time to educate the community. And I think that's one of the biggest things is working on how do we educate the population to be aware of things like signs of stroke or if someone's having a seizure, the importance of being compliant with medications and all of that takes time and resources and that's what we hope to enhance. I was gonna say it takes time and resources but it sounds like it's going pretty well so far. It's going amazingly. <laughs> Very good, well congratulations Dr. Mubarak again, Barrow Global Neurology Program Manager. Congratulations and thanks for joining us. Thank you, thank you for having me.